Hello everybody, welcome to another installment of HTBL Baseball. In terms of the calendar, we're now at April 20th. We're going to have the... Beg your pardon, folks, I have the hiccups as I come on the air. So this ought to make for an interesting first few minutes. We'll have the Mariners and the Browns doing battle in just a moment. Let's look at the scoreboard from yesterday. As it was the Rays over the Indians, 4-2. to two. And in that game, it was Shields over Kovaleski. Lefty Grove picked up the save. Usually he's a starter, but now I have Lefty in the bullpen. Try to sure that up, as they've been having trouble. It was Boston 1-0 over Chicago. Red Sox over the White Sox. Parnell over Faber, or Faber, and Jim Rice went 3-4 for four and a double. It was the Yankees over the Tigers, 8-4. to four. Gidry over Bridges. So, yeah, you know, a couple of days ago I was saying we'll have the Yankees and the Tigers, but the Tigers were in Oakland. Now they're in Yankee Stadium. And Derek Jeter went 4-5, for five, two doubles, and a stolen base. The Orioles over the Blue Jays, 3-1. to one. Warrell over Coke. This game went 14 innings. And Andy Murray went 3-6. for six. A homer and two rippies, probably the deciding blow in the 14th, I would guess, looking at the score. In a battle of the two Texas teams, it was Texas over Houston, 2 nothing. Howe over Scott, and Charlie Howe went the distance, struck out six. In the game you saw here yesterday, it was the Marlins losing to the Pirates, 9-6. to Lever over Burnett. And Pena, three for four. I'm going to pause for a moment, try to clear the bug in my throat. I think I got it now. We'll see. The Phillies beat the Braves five to two. It was Carlton over Glavin. And Bobby Abreu, Abreu went three for five, a homer, his third. The battle of the future and former Expos, it was Montreal over Washington 4-3. Marshall over Taylor, and Wetland picked up the save. Cincinnati over the uh, over the Mets 10-6. Walters over Cone. Lombardi, 1-2, for two, a homer, and two walks. Seattle in St. Louis, the game you're about to see... Uh, today, yesterday, or the prior day, it was 7-3, to three, the Mariners winning. Moore over Howell, and Martinez went 3-5 for five and hit his fourth homer. The Angels, 7-6 to six over the Twins. Shields over Baver, and Robinson went 3-5 for five and two home runs. The Royals over the A's, 8-5. Lee Brandt over Catfish Hunter. Bando went 3-4 for four with two home runs. The Cubbies beat the Dodgers 6-5. to Hernandez over Messersmith. Wilson 3-4, for four, a homer, and a double. Arizona pounded the Milwaukee Brewers 19-6. to Webb over Haas, and Wally Pipp went 4-6 for six and hit his first home run of the year. Also drove in four RBIs. The Cardinals over the Padres 2-1. to one. Haddix over Lefferts. And Boyer went one for two, a homer, and two walks. Finally, the Giants in ten defeated the Rockies seven to six. Lyle over Reed. McCovey two for three, two home runs on the day. Ken Boyer still leading all uh, all in the batting average right now at 469. Keep in mind we've played, uh, this is the 14th game for everybody. And Jack... Chesborough or Cheeseboro for San Diego has an ERA of 0.67 to lead at all comers. Everybody who is qualified by pitching at least 13 innings. So I hope you're not superstitious. I think my hiccups are gone, and that's good because we're going to have Seattle at St. Louis at Sportsman's Park 1944. And hopefully I don't have to adjust the layout here. I'll be controlling the Browns. I think it's the second time I have had the Browns. At, no, I'm thinking of Kansas City. I might be thinking of Kansas City. 
Uh, I think I, we've had St. Louis before, and I think we've had Seattle before. And I will pick my poison for... It's going to be Ned Garver on the bump for the Browns. I'm watching uh, in the background here because I you know, don't, didn't, don't have my normal allotment of time. I'm watching the Rays and the Nationals on uh, June 30th, 2021. And right now it's the Nats pounding the Rays 11-5. Uh, so look up on Baseball Reference what happened to that game if you're watching this a few months into the future. And off we go. Pitching for St. Louis, Ned Garver. Garver on the hill for St. Louis. And we'll get this game started in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at uh, the lineup for Seattle. Bradley leads off in left. Harold Reynolds is at second. He bats second. Edgar Martinez in the three spot, the DH. A-Rod, your shortstop, cleans up. John Olerud's at first base, hitting fifth. Ken Griffey Jr. at center, batting sixth. O'Neill at right field, batting seventh. Montero catching, bats eighth. And Bell is your third ba baseman, batting ninth. I'm going to look at my park layout. It does look acceptable, so we'll just leave it alone. Uh, defensively for the Browns, Ken Williams is a six range and a six arm in left field. Fred, uh, Emmett Emmett Hedrick, Hedrick is a 7 and a 7 in center. Charlie Hemphill, is that his name? Yes, it is. 4 and a 6 in right. Clift is a 7 at third. Stevens, a 5 at short. Shane Deese comes over from the Cardinals. He's a 7 at second. He's picked up in the draft, obviously. And Sizzler can also pitch, but he's a 7 at first base. Duke Farrell, Rick Farrell, is a 7 and a 6 behind the dish, and Garver fields an 8. He has an 8 range pitching. So Bradley leads it off. 222 on the year is Phil. No homers and 2 RBIs. And a foul ball. We'll point out that Garver so far has had a pretty good year. Uh, .93 ERA, 0 and 1, 9 and 2 thirds innings pitched. Has given up seven hits, two walks, and has gotten one strikeout. Opponents hitting 189 against him, and his whip way down from what it should be. It's at 931 coming into this game. Count 0 and 2 to Bradley. He strikes out. Strikeout number one for Ned Garver. Harold Reynolds, 240, 241, one homer, and four ribbies. He's a 10 bunter. Great play by Stevens. It catches the line drive, and now there are two outs for Edgar Martinez. Martinez, so far this year, in the replay, is 365, four homers, seven ribbies. And he takes his base. That brings up Bayrod, 294, five homers, nine RBIs. His OPS a little below what would probably be expected of him at 1.006. So Garver, in the stretch, the pitch, hit well to left, Williams with the catch, pitching and that's Seattle. it for Seattle in the first. Moyer. Jamie Moyer pitching for uh, Seattle. By the way, uh, Garver can go 125, and I think Moyer can go 105. Your lineup for uh, the Browns, Sizzler at first leads off. Shane Deese at second, that's second. Williams in left, he hits, he hits third. Clift at third base, bats fourth. Vernon Stevens at shortstop, bats fifth. Farrell catching, bats sixth. Sullivan is your DH, hitting seventh. Hendrick is at, or Hydrick is at center field, batting eighth. And Hemphill in right, bats ninth. Defensively, for Seattle, Phil Bradley is a five and a three in left. Hit the ball to him. Ken Griffey Jr., a 7 and a 6 in center. Paul O'Neill, 6 and an 8 in ring. David Bell, a 7 at third. Alex Rodriguez, a 7 at short. Harold Reynolds, a 9 at second. And John Olerud already playing in. In fact, the corners are playing in, expecting Sizzler to bunt, which I'm not going to do, is a 6 at first base. Montero, a 4, a 6 and a 4. Behind the dish, and Moyer is a seven range at pitcher. 
Moyer, 794 on the year. He's only pitched five and two thirds, 0 and 1. His whip and opposing batting average numbers are through the roof. So Sizzler will swing away, and it's hit to right field. O'Neill, one out. They expect you to bunt, you don't bunt. Red Shandies, 35 at bats so far in year one of the HGBL. 200, one home run and four ribbies. Moyer. Rodriguez to Olerud, 6-3, and there's two outs. The weather at Sportsman's Park tonight, a wind of 19 mile per hour, light rain. It's coming, uh, the wind coming in from left center field, so it'll push balls, I would think, to the right and towards, yeah, basically generally towards the right field uh, foul line back into play. This brings up Kenny Williams, who is 271, a homer and nine ribbies. This is hit to right. O'Neill going back to the warning track makes the put out. Of course, you'll notice that Sportsman's Park, uh, if I can, I don't know if I can, you'll see the, uh, the arrow that it has a very short porch to right field. You'll see a lot, of, this will be a nice little feast for the left handed hitters to be hitting to the right field porch. It's 350 down the left field line, and Sportsman Park is about 310 to right, generally speaking. So no score going to the second. Olerud is up. He is 196 on the year with three ribbies. He gets on base via the walk. Gets his walking papers. Ken Griffey Jr. is your five hitter. Two, actually, no, he is the six hitter. 200 on the year, three homers, nine ribbies. Sharply hit to right, and it's gone. A line drive to right field. We were just talking about how short right field is. And Ken Griffey Jr. with a poke there to right center field goes 369. And it's 2 nothing in favor of the Mariners. Carver giving up the gopher ball, and his ERA balloons up to 253 just like that. Paul O'Neill up, 154 on the year, nary a home run or an RBI. He strikes out. Carver, his second K of the game to get him to three so far this season. Jesus Montero, only one at bat so far this year. And that's an out, 5-3. Clift to Sizzler. And back to the top. No, it's not back to the top of the order. We got the nine hitter, David Bell. 304, two homers, 10 ribbies. That's a foul ball, easily. And we go to 0-2 on Bell. Both teams coming in 7-6 and in their respective divisions. We play a 144-game season, and the division winners and the best wild card, the best team not to win a division, will all make the playoffs. Garver deals to Bell. That's a walk, and Bell aboard. Now we go to the top of the order, and Phil Bradley, who was 0 for 1. Hit to short. Stevens will go for the first, throw to first. And that's an out, but a close play. Why not just go to get the force at second? A debate for later, I'm sure. And Seattle with the 2-0 lead as we go to the bottom of the second. Harlan Clift, 278, no homers, two ribbies. Grounder the third. Bell, Olerud, one out. That brings up Vern Stevens. Stevens on the year 208. We'll go on and play for the Red Sox if you've been following um, Ron Juckett's 1949 sim using this very sim, Action PC. Vern did not have a bad year in 1949. Moyer deals. Hit the center. Right to Griffey. Two outs. Rick Farrell, 196, no homers, two RBIs on the season. That's a foul tip. So can Moyer strike out, uh, get the side out in order, one, two, three, again this inning as he did in the first. No, a base hit to right. O'Neill scoops it up, and St. Louis has their first hit of the game. St. Louis does not. I do not have a logo for St. Louis. I'll have to work on that. Billy Sullivan, 267, no homers, two RBIs. 
to the second baseman, throws to the shortstop at second to get the force. And the Browns are out in the second. Top of the third, 2 nothing still, Mariners. Harold Reynolds, 0 for 1 on the day. He struck out. K number 3 for Garver. That brings up Martinez, who has not had an official at bat so far today. Walked his first time up. And that's a dying quail base hit to right. Hemphill scoops it up. And Martinez safely aboard with a single. A little bit of a threat to steal is Martinez, 57%. We will keep him honest. And that brings him down to 36. A rod 0 for 1. A web gem in right in third base. Third base by Cliff. Jumped up in the air and made a nice catch of a line drive. Probably prevented extra bases on the down the left field line. So with two outs in the third. Here is Olerud, who is not doesn't have an official at bat because he walked in inning number two. And a hit by pitch. Whenever you hear the cry of dead ball, that means the batter was hit by the pitch. Everybody moves up the base. So with two outs, still, it's Ken Griffey who hit the homer earlier. 216 on the air, one for one and a, a two-run homer earlier in the game. And this has popped up, looking like Shane Deist. No, it's Sizzler making the put out. And the side retired for Seattle in their third. We'll play the Seattle third inning, uh, the St. Louis third inning, because I just played the Seattle third inning. Bottom of the third coming up, 2 nothing. St. Louis trailing. Heydrick stepping up. We got the 8, 9, and 1 hitters. Heydrick, Hemphill, and Sizzler. Sounds like a law firm. And... Seattle expecting to bunt here. I'm not bunting because I'm down two runs. Sharply hit and right to Bell. We want to went right to Bell on a line drive, and you wonder what would have happened if he was playing his normal position instead of being in expecting a bunt. One out. Hemphill up. 133 on the uh, on the year. No homers and a ribby. See what happens here, Moyer. Dealing to Griffey, line drive, two outs. And that brings up George Sizzler. Sizzler now 0 for 1 on the air as finally St. Louis gets to uh, their second turns at bat. Grounder foul ball easily. Now Sizzler bats again. Hit the center and Griffey slides to his left, makes the put out. So we've played three innings. It's 2 nothing. Seattle leading. O'Neill 0 for 1. He'll lead off in the fourth. Hit to right. Hemp Hill, one out. That brings up Jesus Montero again, who is 0 for 1. He's only had two at-bats this season, so he's filling in for somebody. Grounder to short, over to first, second out. David Bell walked to his first at bat, I think. Yes, he did. He walks again. So two walks on the day for David Bell. Not a bad day's work so far. Back to the top of the order for Seattle for their third turns at bats. We're going to pitch aggressively to Bradley, who is 0 for 2. Hit the center. Heydrich with the put out. And we are now through three and a half with the score Seattle 2 and the St. Louis Browns. Nothing. Shane Deist, 0 for 1. Grounder to third. Great play by a bell to make the put out. Olerud gets it in time for the first out. Light rain falling at Sportsman's Park for this game. Again, they're thinking Williams is going to bunt. I'm thinking I'm swinging away. And right to O'Neill. Two outs now in the Browns' fourth. Jamie Moyer's uh, ERA has now come down to 482 as a result of three and two-thirds scoreless innings. Harlan Cl Clift is 0 for 1. Just double checking to make sure I had the name right. This is popped to first base, but a foul ball as it gets in the right field stands. 
That was a 73 mile per hour change up by Moyer. Get the count to two and two. Here's the pitch. He struck out the first K of the game for Moyer. Jamie Moyer, who pitched well into his 40s. And we go to the fifth. It is 2 0 Mariners. Back to Harold Reynolds, who is 0 for 2 today. Grounder to the second baseman, Shane Deese, who's playing in a little bit. Sizzler, one out. 4 3 on your scorecard. Brings us back to Edgar Martinez, one for one in a walk. Grounded the first base, Sizzler unassisted, two outs. Alex Rodriguez, 0 for two. Ball four, and Rodriguez will take his base. A bit of a stolen base threat, kind of like Edgar Martinez. We'll throw to keep him honest. He's safe. And now he's, he's always up to 69%. Should have ignored him. John Olerud. Two walks so far in the second. Actually, no, a walk in the second and a hit by a pitch in the third. Grounded to short. Stevens goes to the second base bag unassisted. And Seattle now done in the fifth. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It's still 2 nothing in favor. Of the Mariners. Here's Vern Stevens again. 0 for 1. Moyer with 4. Scoreless inning so far. Hope I didn't jinx him. This is back, way back to center field. But Griffey making the play. Near the warning track. And that's one gone now in the Browns 5th inning. 2-2-0 two, two, oh for Seattle. 6 left on base. St. Louis only has 1 hit. And they've only left 1 on base. So... Moyer is moving right along here. Only that one hit in a second and only one K. Moyer is at 61 pitches. Garver is up to 92. Moyer now working Rick Farrell. One for one. And a walk now. We're going to take, see if we can get a better... 56% is too low. We're going to hit and run with Sullivan. Got to get something going here. And let's see what happened. It was Farrell to second. It was Reynolds throwing to Ullerud, ignoring the runner going from first to second, which was Farrell. And there's two outs now for Heydrick, who is 0 for 1. I keep wanting to call him Hedrick. The pitch. Grounder down the first base side. Ullerud unassisted. And St. Louis cannot get anything going through five. It's 2 nothing Seattle. Moyer pitching a gem. We'll see how long he stays in and how effective he will be. We go to the sixth. Garver at 92 pitches. His EPC expected to be 125. Griffey, one for two. He had that home run in the second. Hit well to right. Hemphill at the warning track for the first out. This brings up. Paul O'Neill, 0 for 2. Went on for the play for the Yankees. Hemp Hill again at the warning track for the second out. As O'Neill gave that a ride. Last chance in the Seattle sixth is Montero, who is 0 for 2 and 0 for 3 for the season. Well, now he's 1 for 4. Base hit the left. That brings up David Bell. Bell so far, no official at bats. He walked in the second and in the fourth. Ground of the third, Cliff to first, and they get the out there to retire the side. So now we've played five and a half, two nothing, Seattle. Corners in again for Hemphill, who's a nine bunner, but I have no designs on bunning. Bell, did they get him at first? Yes, they did, one out. Tough play, uh, as that was a slow ground ball. Bell picked it up, just got it to Olerud in time for the first out. Again, they play the corners in for George Sisler, who is 0 for 2 and a damn good hitter. Real life, real life stats that he should have is 361, 7 homers, 93. And stole 30 bases and had an OPS of 908. This game... In the replay, he's 279 right now and is 0 for 2 today. So the corner is again playing in. And it's a walk. 
And we're going to go and steal second here with Shane D stuff. Looks like he got a good jump. He did, and Sizzler has his second stolen base of the season. Shane D stole for two. Let's see if he can make something happen. Hit the center. Griffey coming in hard makes the put out for the second out. The winds have shifted. They are now blowing in from center at 22 mile per hour. miles per hour. Ken Williams is 0 for 2. He hits this one well to the left. Bradley looking up. It's gone. No, it's off the wall. It's off the wall. Run, 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 run will score. <laughs> one run will score on the double, and suddenly we have a 2-1 game. Kind of like uh, last night, that kind that wall kind of tricked me. I was thinking it was going to go over. It did not. It just bounced off the top of the wall. And we'll show you the replay of this. And I thought it was gone. Nope, it just bounced off the wall. Ken Williams is in second with a double, and we have a 2 to 1 game. Clift is 0 for 2 today. Griffey put out. And that's it for St. Louis in the sixth. They pick up one and cut the lead in half. It is 2 to 1. <laughs> And I'm getting ready for my seventh inning stretch. If I can find the right folder. There we go. Bradley, 0 for 3 today. Saddle batting for the fourth time, I believe. Slow grounder in front of the catcher, Farrell. Might have been a bunt. And it was a bunt. Uh, they got it to the second baseman covering first, and there's one out. Garver at 111 pitches. He probably could make it through the seventh inning okay. After that, we're going to have to have a little talk. Harold Reynolds is 0 for 3. Another bunt, but this time Reynolds is going to get a board. One on, one out for Edgar Martinez. And that is a line drive to left field for the second out. Brings up A-Rod, who is 0 for 2 today. And Reynolds gets to second safely. I'm going to walk A-Rod. Because they have a 192 hitter in Olerud up. Might be the last uh, batter that Garver faces today. They'll go over it carefully. Here's the pitch. All four, so the bases are loaded. Garver is over his EPC. I'm going to look and see what the bullpen situation is. And I'm going to look a little more. Hang on. Rotation for St. Louis is Newsom, Glade, Davenport, Howell, and Garver. Who's in the bullpen? Who is my closer? My closer is Fontenot. Against lefties and against righties, it's Wilkes. So I'm going to put Satchel Page in. And he will be my reliever. One of the legendary Negro League players of all time is Satchel. And so far he has seen three innings worth of action this season. He's 1-0 and with one save. Surrendered a hit and the base on balls. Opponents are only hitting 111 against them. So it's Satchel Page and Ken Griffey Jr. The only, the only, the kind of matchup you can only get here on the hometown baseball league. Two outs. Oh, this is a very critical moment here. Griffey hits it to right. Stretch time.
Bum, 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 bum. Hello, everybody. Big Polly, ready to bring you this stretch run here on the uh, game of the day in the HDBL. Seattle and St. Louis each coming in seven and six. It's going to be Stevens followed by Farrell and Sullivan hitting for the Browns in the seventh. Moyer has pitched well, 90 pitches. And has only surrendered one run, uh, which was earned. And he got that in the six. So he might be getting tired here. Here's Vern, 0 for 2. Hit to left field. Bradley underneath it for the first out. Here's Farrell, 1 for 1. I think it's too early to start thinking pinch hitters. Reynolds to Olerud, 4 3 for the second out. That brings up Billy Sullivan, who is hitting 255. Now here, against righties, he should hit. Actually, Moyer is a lefty, and he hit, he, he's hitting 265, or should hit 265 against lefties. So here, I'm going to make a play, and I'm going to bring Wallace in. Wallace so far in the year has only had one at bat, but he hits lefties 310 or should. So they get the lefty righty matchup. Stroke to sit to the left, Bradley, and Seattle is out defensively in the seventh. We go to the eighth, 2 1. The win now really howling. It's in from left center field at 25. So you're going to have to manufacture a run here, St. Louis, if you want to get back in the game. Satchel Page coming out, working his second inning. Here's O'Neill, 0 for 3. Hit the center. Heydrich, that ball holding up in the wind for him, and there is one out in the Mariner 8. Montero, 1 for 3. Now he's 2 for 4 on a base hit to left. McKean is going to come in and run for Montero at first base. McKean is the new runner at first. Look at McKean. No at bats so far this year. Or well, we don't think so, anyway. Let's... Not trying to change the computer lineup. I wanted to look at McKean. McKean so far on the year. This, this is actually his first appearance. So we don't know too much about him. David Bell 0 for 1. Grounded a short. They go, they go for the out at first and get it. And there's two outs. Runner at second for Phil Bradley, who is 0 for 4. He hits it to third. Clark, Sizzler, side retired. Rick Camp comes in and pitches for, for the Mariners. You might remember Mick Camp, Rick Camp if you watched a game on July 4th, 1985 between the Braves and Mets where he hits a home run for the Braves to tie the game. Uh, and Jordan Sterling nearly had a heart attack when he was calling that for the Braves. Look up Rick Camp home run on Google. One of the wildest games ever, uh, at least to my recollection, because I think it went 18, 19 innings. And the Mets won the game by a football score, like 16-13. to 13. And I think they broke the record for the most runs scored uh, either in the 18th or 19th. It went a long, long way. Long, long game. Game didn't end until 4 in the morning. It was supposed to start at 7.30, but they had a rain delay till 10. And then when they played, they kept playing and playing and playing. And at least on two occasions that I remember, the Braves tied the game. I watched the whole game. I was 14 years old. I was actually a few months shy of 14, and I watched the game. I, uh, this was the year uh, I, I graduated middle school and was about to start high school, and I watched the whole game. I think I even watched the rain delay programming on TBS, which I think was like Beverly Hillbillies or the Andy Griffith Show or something like that. Nothing wrong with Andy Griffith. And nothing wrong with the Beverly Hillbillies. They're all good shows. Uh, Camp dealing to Heydrich, who is 0 for 2. Right to Camp. Olerud with the put out. And there's now one gone in the Browns' eighth. 
that brings up Hemp Hill. Again, Seattle thinking bunt. I'm not thinking that. Base hit to the right center. It's going to go all the way to the wall, and that's exactly what the Browns needed. They need to manufacture a run. Hemp Hill in the second with a double. Bringing up Sizzler, who is 0 for 2. This is the guy you want in this kind of situation. Up the middle. Reynolds to Olerud to get the out, and Hemphill will move to third. Red Shandies can save the inning for St. Louis with two outs. He's 0 for 3. But right to Rodriguez, who fires it over to Olerud to get the third out of the inning. So we go to the ninth. Pretty interesting finish we have in store for us. It's 2 to 1. Now the wind has shifted a little bit. It's coming in from straightaway center at 25. Page dealing to Reynolds. Hit the center. Could go all the way, but Heydrich makes, the pl makes a play at the wall for the first out. Martinez is one for three. Edgar, let's see what he does. Clift, Sizzler, two outs. Five, three ground out. Now Satchel, who is yet to give up a run in five innings pitch. We'll work to A-Rod, another dream matchup. 0 for 2, ball 4. That is only the second walk Page has surrendered this season, first today. Olerud 0 for 1. And we had an error. We had a stolen base attempt by Rodriguez. The throw went wild in the center field. And Rodriguez was able to move to third on that. So do you hit to Ol do you pitch to Olerud or do you pitch to Griffey? Well, you got two outs, so you really don't really don't have to do do anything defensively. Grounder the third, infield hit. Clift seemed to have trouble with it. And that was a bad time for that to happen to the Browns. It's now three to one. Error bringing in Rodriguez, I believe. So now a runner at first for Clay Ken Griffey Jr who had a home run earlier, and this is sky to right, Hemfield underneath it. But that run might be the dagger for tonight's chances for the Browns. They trail 3-1, going to the bottom of the ninth. Kenny Williams, 1 for 3. He hits this to right, but with that wind blowing in, O'Neal, no trouble with that. And there's one out. Harlan Clift, 0 for 3. Shortstop Rodriguez throws the first. Beats Cliff by a good couple of steps. Last chance now for St. Louis. Stevens is 0 for 3. He hits right. He's 286. So do we take a look at our last chance here? We still got Red Crest who could play shortstop. I'm going to bring in Tobin to pinch hit. Tobin on the year has 38 at bats. Hitting 263, no homers, five ribbies. Camp, by the way, if I didn't mention it before, he's 245 through seven and a third. So he could pick up his sa a save right here on this at bat. Grounder to second, this will do it. Game is over, and Seattle prevails. The final being three to one. So Seattle, three runs, five hits, no errors. St. Louis, a run, three hits, and two errors. Always an ugly line score when you got more errors than runs. Moyer with the win. Camp will get the save. Garver will get the loss. Both teams used relief pitchers. And in HTBL play, that is a bit rare. Your MVP of the game was Jamie Moyer, and that was well-deserved. So I hope you enjoyed uh, today's presentation of the HGBL. We will be back tomorrow. We'll look at one of the teams in the National League Midwest. I do not know whom yet. It will probably be Milwaukee and whoever Milwaukee plays tomorrow, April 21st, uh, in terms of the game timeline. So this has been Big Polly coming to you. We wish you all well. Godspeed and God bless. Go Lightning, go Bucks. And we'll do it again soon, and bye-bye for now, everybody.